At Oakwood, patients come first. Our discharge planning process, using bedside progression rounds, was created to help us provide a great patient experience to each and every patient and ensure a safe and timely discharge. This approach to discharge planning brings together staff nurses, charge nurses, discharge planners, and other multidisciplinary team members. This team works together to ensure that patients and family members know what to do once they leave the hospital and are prepared for a safe transition. Using interdisciplinary bedside progression rounds to prepare patients for discharge provides many benefits. This process reduces readmission rates by identifying barriers to discharge and improving patient and family understanding of discharge instructions and follow-up care. It improves the patient experience with the discharge process and transition home. It ensures that we meet CMS standards that require patients have early and ongoing involvement in their discharge plan. Additionally, bedside discharge planning focuses on patient-centered communication and care, informing patients and families what to expect, explaining things in a way they can understand, answering their questions, and verifying their knowledge of medications and instructions. To see how the bedside progression rounding process works, let's watch as a discharge planning team rounds on Mrs. Foster, a 66-year-old female with an admitting diagnosis of pneumonia. Ms. Foster, may we come in? Yes. Ms. Foster, this is the discharge planning team that I was telling you about. We're here to ask you a few questions about what you might need in order to help care for yourself at home. Is this your daughter? Yes, I'm Melissa, her daughter. It's good to meet you. I'm glad you're here for the conversation. This is Stacy, our charge nurse, and Kristen, your discharge planner. Ms. Foster came in last night with pneumonia. Her doctor has continued her home medications and added IV antibiotics and an IV steroid. We're giving her nebulizer treatments as well. Respiratory services are providing the treatments and pulmonology has been consulted. They should see her today. Thanks, Brian. Mrs. Foster, my job as discharge planner is to make any arrangements for your continued care when you return home. My notes indicate that you live at home with your husband. Will you need any assistance when you go home or is he gonna be able to help you? Oh yes, he'll help me out. Melissa lives across the street and she'll come over and help check on me too. They'll keep a good eye on me. My doctor told me that I might need to have oxygen at home. Is that right? Yes, he told me that as well. The respiratory therapist will come by on the day of your discharge and they will walk you in the hallways to check your oxygen levels. In the event that you need oxygen, they will give you instructions on how to use it and answer any questions that you may have at that time. According to Medicare guidelines, most pneumonia patients only have to be in the hospital about three days. So you were admitted here on Tuesday, so I'm hoping you'll be able to go home on Friday and we'll update you on all arrangements as we go. I'm a little concerned. My mom hasn't been receiving her Coumadin here. Thank you for mentioning that, Melissa. Her INR level was elevated when she came in, so we're withholding the Coumadin for now. What's an INR? INR is the lab value that we get from her blood. It helps the doctors and pharmacists determine what an appropriate dose of Coumadin is. When we have a new INR level, we will consult pharmacy and they'll restart a Coumadin if it's appropriate. I'll also ask them to review with your mother what she knows about taking Coumadin and the precautions that go with it. They might be able to help us understand why it was elevated to begin with. Sometimes medication interactions can cause that and sometimes a change in your diet can. That would be helpful. My doctor gave me a list of foods that I need to keep track of, but it's confusing because of all the things they say I can and can't eat. Ms. Foster, I'm going to go ahead and order a consult for the pharmacist and for the dietitian to come and talk with you and answer any questions that you may have. Brian, this is a core measure patient. Please make sure that you do the correct documentation of what we've just discussed here. And there's also a best practice advisory for VTE prophylaxis. When you contact the doctor, can you please get an order for VTE prophylaxis and to discuss whether or not she's going to need home oxygen so we can get that in place, please. I will. How will I keep track of all this? Ms. Foster, your discharge folder you were given on admission, you can put all of your information in here. It already has the details in it on your pneumonia, your IV steroids, and antibiotics. Do you have any questions about anything inside or anything we've discussed so far? Not right now, thank you. Mrs. Foster, if there are any new changes, uh, we'll let you know. And if you have any other questions, you can ask any of us. Melissa, do you have any questions? I do. How do I know when my mom's gonna come home? And what, am, what do I do when she gets there? 
Well, the best way to know is to attend the discharge planning rounds like this one. We meet Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. And I encourage you to go over the information in the red discharge folder. You'll want to go over the discharge checklist and this will help you know how to continue your mom's care at home. When the pharmacist, dietitian, and respiratory therapist visit, they'll also put their information in the folder and then you can go over that with her as well. And Ms. Foster, if Melissa is unable to attend one of the discharge planning rounds, you can authorize us to update her over the phone as well. That would be great. Is there anything else we can do for you? Nope, thank you. It's great to see families so involved in the care of their parents. Thank you for your time, Melissa. To recap, the bedside discharge planning process is a critical component of the patient experience. It reduces readmission rates. It improves the patient perception of the discharge process. It ensures we meet CMS requirements. And it strengthens patient and family communication and makes it more effective. Thank you for all you do to ensure our patients have a great experience during their hospital stay and once they go home.